Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to the My NHL Pearls of Wisdom show, coming from my uh, Seattle apartment, of course. And uh, oh, the subscribers! Thank you very much for subscribing and touching the bell. It really does help out a lot for the channel. helps Helps it grow. Helps me bring you this fine programming. And today we're going to be looking more at Seth. Jones trades and we're specifically I got the Islanders up here but we're specifically going to be looking at a few teams I'm going to be looking at the a little bit at the Islanders we have a trade offer uh, in the comment section which is right here uh, we have a trade offer from Gavin who likes to comment down there why don't I get why don't I minimize myself all the crap here you don't need to see me uh, and uh, we can look at this trade offer. We also uh, have a letter. We're going to look at the Winnipeg Jets. In the trade offer, we have the Edmonton Oilers as a possibility, uh, the Islanders, and yeah, that's it. That's what we're going to be looking at. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's look at it. There's a lot of teams that are going to be looking at looking out for uh, Jones here. If you haven't heard, by the way. Seth Jones went to Columbus and said, I ain't signing. Yeah, just to let you know right off. Good for him to get it out of the way. Just say, I'm not coming back. I don't want to sign here, whatever the case may be. However, he may have said it. But it really hurts for uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I would say sort of hurts. Now, the value for Seth Jones is all over the board. Most people... They hear six foot two, six foot three defensemen that can move the puck and, and you know, kind of skate it out of the zone, not bad, and all of those sort of things. Uh, they've heard Seth Jones up for Norris trophies and all kinds of stuff. All right. So they're like, yeah, I want him on my team, and we'll see some offers here that kind of give a sort of value like that. Like this is a Norris trophy candidate. Now, if you're an analytics person, you will know in the last two years, and actually, I'm not an analytics person per se. I'm not the one that goes and figures out the analytics. And go, I, I have way too many naps to get in to be doing all that stuff. But I do have a fellow named Peyton on the radio who work, who's going to be on my show this afternoon, 3 to 5 Eastern. Go check it out, Pearl of Wisdom Show. Um, and other great analytics guys that I pay attention to a lot and I listen to it and I, I it helps me look at the game in a different way turns out a lot of times it actually works out to my eye test and in Seth Jones the last two years it does I I, I watch a, a divorce worthy amount of hockey and uh, <laughs> I've watched quite a bit of Columbus Blue Jackets games and what I saw in Seth Jones was a player that was very indecisive in his defensive zone. Um, he, uh, he His power play IQ was not that high. He, he just wants to shoot it, and that's about it. He does have a huge shot. Um, I don't see a player that's progressed as much as I thought he would progress, to tell you the honest truth. Now, you can tell me in the comment section what you think about all of this. There was a time when I thought he was better than he is now. And the last two years, it's like been a regression to me. However, there there are lots of general managers out there that will perceive that completely different and possibly maybe even think it's just a product of being in Columbus where they've lost a lot of great players and that's why his head's not in the game. They look at things totally in a lot of weird ways. Sometimes they just don't even see that. They just see big defensemen move the puck on them. That's it. So that's, you know, not all teams are analytics driven now. Most are, but not all. Okay, so let's see what Gavin has to say. He comments there a lot. You guys can do this too. I'll have you on the, oh, my little face is there. That's all right. <laughs> that's supposed to be my uh, Twitter. If you want my Twitter, just go to Perlo's NHL POW at, on Twitter, and you can find me there. The team that makes the most sense for him are, is the Islanders. The reason 
is because Columbus needs defensemen back. And if the Islanders can sign Jones long term, they can send Columbus Dobson and Wild in return. Okay, see, shows you a. Di- um, I'll tell you this. I if I'm if I'm uh, especially when you consider he has to be re-signed. I'm assuming Gavin here is do it, making this trade based on the fact that the agent uh, agent has talked to the player, the uh, or the team has been able to talk to the agent is what I'm trying to say, and they've worked out a deal. Because if not, this is a way overpayment. Jones has only got a year left on his contract. At five, at six. That's the reason why he's leaving. He's saying he's not re-signing. So it's only he's he'll be a rental unless he does that. So we're gonna assume that the team worked out the deal. Even at that, I'm all over this. If I'm uh, Kekalainen, Dobson is a beast. He's growing. He's getting better. I think he's gonna be as good as Jones, if not better. He could. I think he could be better than Jones. Than Jones in the long run. And you're throwing Bode Wild in as well, who's a point of game junior player. Uh, also pretty good sized kid. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that all day. I would actually take that if Seth Jones wasn't asking to be traded. I think that's a good deal. I'm all over it. So he goes on and says, the second team, and we're going to look at the Edmonton Oilers after, after we do this. The second team that makes sense is Edmonton. They do not sign Larson. I didn't see that part, actually. They go. Uh, they also send Columbus two defensemen, Broberg and Bouchard. And as an Oilers fan, no, 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 no. Not Broberg and Bouchard. I love Bouchard. I think Bouchard could be as good as Jones is now. Now, that's my perception of Jones. Is Bouchard going to be a Norris caliber defenseman? Probably not. So if Holland thinks Jones is a Norris caliber defenseman, maybe he may consider something like this. God, please no. But he may consider something like this. That would be, they are, they are extremely high on Broger, Broberg and extremely high on Bouchard, though. I have a feeling they let this go, especially if they're not re-signing Larson. That's three defensemen you're not going to have next year. They have to basically think that uh, he is a, that uh, Seth Jones is Norris caliber defenseman to even think of this. And even if they do, that's a lot of depth off of one position to be given up for one player, regardless of who he is. So it, it's an interesting trade, bud. But I, I think uh, if again, if I'm going to get Broberg and Bouchard for Jones in the situation. And again, this is obviously a re-sign Jones. And it would depend on how much he's looking for. If if we're thinking he's a Norris caliber defenseman, you're looking at eight, nine million a year, ten million maybe, you know, something like that. He hasn't proved it yet, so he probably isn't going to get the ten, maybe eight, eight and a half. So they got to do all that and they lose two prospects who are basically great on the cap for the next couple of years because they're on uh, uh, their uh, first contracts. So uh, tough one. So now he says they're, they're – and I, by the way, I'm not putting Gavin down here. He's put out great stuff. Gavin is pretty – is awesome. I, I really like his, uh, the, his contribution here. Uh, And if you disagree out here, please tell us, because I love that too. (laughs) Now there could be three-team trade with Buffalo, Columbus, and the Islanders. If Columbus pick is in the top two or not drop from the top, from the past six. So he's saying if the Columbus pick is in the top two, there's a three-way trade here. Two Columbus, Ryan Hart and Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson is... uh, uh, I believe a second round pick in 2018. Uh, looking not too bad. About 6'1". He's looking pretty good. 2019, actually. Uh, he's looking not too bad in college right now. He's putting up about half a point a game. Could be a decent defenseman in the NHL. Hard to say right now. Uh, Reinhardt is, was a beast at the end of the year. Then he says Dobson goes there from the Islanders. Again, I'm all over this. If I'm Columbus Blue Jackets, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, please, thank you. 
I will take that deal. Done. Even if Jones isn't asking for a trade, I'm on that. Now, if they think that, you know, if there's a team out there that thinks he's still a Norris Trophy defenseman, you know, maybe not, but I don't. So, Merzlikens this year, this year's first, first, the Columbus pick to Buffalo. This goes to Buffalo. Merzlikens, a top two pick, which could be like Beniers, uh, who is uh, like a Felino type center, maybe with more offense. It's hard to tell right now. For uh, Domi, and then from Columbus, from Columbus, Bellows and Wild from the Islanders for Reinhardt and Johnson as that they give up. And Jones and uh, the Islanders get Jones from Columbus. I think that's just way too much. They're giving up Bellows. The Islanders are giving up Bellows, Wild, Dobson. Yeah, Bellows, Wild, Dobson for Jones. That's too much. To me, it is. Um, maybe somebody will think otherwise. Tell me what you think. That, to me, that's way too much. Uh, that helps Columbus with their number one center. I agree. Uh, Buffalo needs a goaltender unless they can re-inside Omar. I think Omar, Omar might resign because he may not be a number one anywhere else. But, okay, I get you. Plus two first-round picks. Uh, and, again, that's, a, that's just a crap load to give up. So, I'm not with you on this one, buddy. I usually kind of am, but this one I'm a little off. I think this is too much for Jones. So tell me in the comment section if you want to continue this conversation. I'm going to look at some other guy teams here. I got a I got a, a a letter here and send your letters. We love your letters. We get them every day. We go down in the mail room. Guido goes down, picks them up, pours them all over the letter table, and we do the Perlo dance around the table and have a lot of frolic. Uh, Tudis. Uh, Kraut the berry, Kraut berry, almost sounds German, but from Oxford, England says, what about the Winnipeg Jets? Uh, so I was like, okay, what about the Winnipeg Jets for, uh, that makes a lot of sense. He says we need defensemen, uh, that he loves Jones, just, he loves Jones, Obviously, maybe one of these Norse trophy candidate kind of guys. Uh, we also he also mentions that the idea that Dubois is already there, so he could be talking to Jones to come over to Winnipeg. All very true. However, Jones I believe is from California or something like that. Uh, I should have looked that up. Um, let me look it up. What the heck? We can look it up real quick. I know he's from the United States, so I don't know how he would think about going to Canada. Maybe he doesn't care. I mean, not all not all people do. He's from Arlington, Texas. That's what it was. So I don't know if going to Canada would be high on his list, but if he really likes Dubois and they could be friends and Dubois is saying all great things about going to Winnipeg and all that kind of stuff like that, you never know. And uh, Winnipeg is, you know, a, per a team that isn't really, doesn't appear to be uh, I don't know how analytics driven they are. As it turns out, they have a lot of an very strong analytics players. Shifley, uh, Nikolai Ehlers, uh, DeMello. Um, not so much on Morrissey. He kind of went down a little bit this year. Uh, but Lowry, Cop. I don't know if that's by accident or what. But if they're thinking he's like a lot of uh, per the perception in the league is that he's Norris level. What are they going to be looking at to give up? Um, okay. First of all, Columbus is going to be looking for centers. Um, I, I know in the off season, I read a bunch of stuff uh, that said they were going for certain defensemen, but everybody wanted um, Ville Hinala, and they would not give him up. And I have a feeling that's exactly who they would be looking for here. Uh, they being Columbus. I got to move, make sure I'm, you guys can see this all right. They being Columbus would be looking for here. Um, 
because he's he's put up 11 points in 19 games in the AHL, 14 points in 19 games in the – oh, sorry, that's in the Liga. Uh, four points in seven games. When he's played in the NHL, he's looked pretty darn good. He's progressing well. He's a good puck mover, all of those sort of things. The thing is, though, and you don't think an organization may already have a lean on Jones – and maybe Hinala was part, they thought that Hinala would have been part of this deal already. And that's why he didn't want to give him up. So they kept him. So let's look at Vile Hinala, who's a left defenseman, and they're really going to need a right defenseman. Uh, Columbus is going to need a right defenseman, I would imagine, or they're going to be looking for a right defenseman. Dylan DeMello to give them a defenseman to work with at $3 million a year. It'll give them a right defenseman. That'll put. Jo- uh, that'll put Jones up there with Morrissey. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty solid pairing if you think he's as good as what a lot of people think he is. Um, they certainly, like I said, they need defense. Uh, they need better defensemen, no doubt about it. And uh, perception is Jones could be the better defenseman. Um, then I had Cole Perfetti. Cole Perfetti is the center they just picked up and I believe, was it the last draft or the draft before? 2020 draft. They could go Cole Perfetti uh, in that deal. If they think he's that strong, then Cole Perfetti, maybe Dominic Toninato. Oh, no, not Dominic Toninato. Sorry, he's 27. I'm thinking of the wrong person. Ville Hinala and... DeMello plus a first round pick or something of that nature. What do you think of that deal? It depends on how big you like, how much you like Cole Perfetti. Cole Perfetti looks like he's going to, he's putting up like almost a point a game in the minors already this year. That's pretty darn good for a, for a young center like him to be putting that up. He's, he's going to be a possible number one centerman, a very likely number two, very possible number one. And uh, Hinala, great, uh, like all over the league, they were looking for him. They were asking for him, and the Jets were turning him down like crazy. So if you, But if you think he's a Norris caliber, close to a Norris caliber, that plus more may, be up on the, may be have to be on the table to pick him up. So what do you think, Winnipeg fans? Are you going to do something like that? Are you looking at that? Uh, now... The Edmonton Oilers was the other one that he brought up. So I'll look at the Edmonton Oilers. I really don't want my team to do this. Uh, his offer was Broberg and Bouchard. I just can't. I would be devastated if they do that, honestly. I don't think they will. They are. The Oilers are extremely high on Evan Bouchard. Six foot three, 194. He's only 21 years old. He's, he's almost been playing a reg, He's been playing close to a regular shift when he's in. And next year, he's almost certainly ready for prime time. Uh, He's got a huge shot. Uh, I don't think they're going to give him up. Those two, I don't, and I think, but but you could do something like, if I'm assuming that Holland is much higher on Jones than I am, if he is, you could do Ethan Bear, maybe Broberg. You're not going to get your center. From Edmonton. We don't have centers to give. Ethan Bear, Broberg, and the Oilers first this year. And what else do you want to add on that? Um, we can't afford to give up forwards. We just can't. So you better be really high on Broberg, Bear, the first this year, and uh, maybe Raphael Lavoie, if you're high on him. He put up really good... He put up some pretty good numbers in in Europe. I know that. He was doing really well. 45 points in 51 games. In the AHL, he had 10 points in 19 games. Not bad for a 20-year-old. And he's a good size. Six foot four. Big boy. We'll give you a... He's, he, he's almost certainly going to play. So that's Broberg, which was a first-round pick. Uh Bear, who's already on the way, he can play in the lineup right now, and he's a righty. Varying degrees of what people think of him, but if 
Columbus is really high on him, and a lot of people are, then you have that. And, uh, you know, short of giving up their first from last year, Dylan Holloway, God, please don't do that. That would probably be the showstopper if we threw that in there. That would probably do it for sure. And Raphael Lavoie, who's probably still a year or two away, but it's going to be a player. So tell me what you think about those trades. Tell me what you think your trades are going to be. Also, let me know what team you would like me to do next. Which teams would you like me to do next? I have a few in my head. I'll tell you a couple. Uh, but uh, until then, Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, go over to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, man. I'm telling you, 18,000 views this month. It's getting greater and greater all the time. Don't let the name fool you. It's not a Steelers Flyers website. The guy's name is Steel Flyers. That's his moniker. That's what he goes by. He's amazing. Love the guy. Awesome dude. It's an all sports network. We're building right now, and we're already getting 18,000. When it's done, you're going to have writers, cappers, uh, writers, not cappers, sorry, uh, YouTubers, uh, bloggers, bloggers. For every team of the four major sports, all day, every day, lives, live play-by-plays, everything, all in one channel. Woo! Go check it out. Have a great day, everybody. That's all I got for you. Okay, bye. That's my full 42 is what I should be saying.